so maybe you've taken a couple hundred notes in your Obsidian Vault, and now you're getting to the point, say, how the heck do I organize this stuff? Hey folks, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work, and today we're going to talk about how to organize your vault using maps of content. Maps of content is a term or an organizational or thought process, I guess, method that was developed by Nick Milo. He's the guy behind the Linking Your Thinking YouTube channel. For the purposes of this video, you can think of maps of content essentially as a workspace or a launch pad. It's a way to get into your notes easily just by following some links to explore them but it's also a way to structure your notes or give yourself a workspace to be able to flesh out a specific topic or idea that you are working on. So at the core, a map of content is really a broad idea that you want to explore or learn, but maybe don't have very many notes on yet. Or it's a place where you can pull together notes that you have on an existing topic to try to whittle those notes down into a cohesive set of thoughts. Let's dive into Obsidian so I can show you my vault and how I've been working with maps of content lately. Okay, so on the screen here, you can see that I have my dashboard note up. The dashboard note is really my homepage. If you visit my Obsidian published site at notes.justinderose.com, this is what you're going to see. I've got some loose structure here, and again, I'm still fleshing this out for the holistic picture of my note, but I've got some jump off points to get into tags. I've got some launch points here into some high level maps of content, and I have a very, very rudimentary vault workflow here that kind of shows the different tools and the processes that I use to craft notes inside of my vault. Now, if I jump into this productivity map of content, you can see this is kind of a mess. It's a work in progress. And that is one of the benefits of taking the maps of content mode of thinking toward organizing your notes. You can start off at a very high level and you can bring things up into a map of content. You can explore into them. Basically, it's a place for you to put your ideas so that you can launch into them at a later point in time. Now, what I have done here is under productivity map of content, I have created a header for key topics here. These are key topics that are related to literature notes and permanent notes that I have in my vault. Then at this point in time, I've linked all the notes that I could find that were relating to the broad subject area of productivity. This is one of the ways that you can approach a map of content. You can pull information into the map of content and then eventually I'm going to work on sorting this out. What's relevant to this particular map of content? What's relevant to this broad idea of productivity? Is there a deeper subject area that I want to dive into, which we'll talk about in just a moment? Then I can start to whittle these notes down. I can leave the relevant notes there. I can start to flesh out ideas directly in this map of content and I can delete links to notes that maybe aren't as relevant in the future. So if I were to create another map of content, say I want to take the top down approach. There's a subject that I've been interested in lately called time blocking. So I'm gonna create a time blocking MOC. Then what I can do when I open that up, I will link to the productivity MOC just so that I have a way back to it then this is essentially a workspace now. Time blocking is a subject that I've been interested in, and so I've been reading articles about it. And there's an excellent article on the Doist blog, uh, Ambition and Balance, that I'm going to go take a look at, and I'll pull it up, and then I'm going to take some notes on it here. So I'll be back in just a second, and I'll show you what I have. Okay, so this is really just a very, very basic start. I've got this article here, which I'm gonna clip the link in here because I forgot to do that. Okay, so I've got this article on the right-hand side of the screen here, this time blocking bot guide by Doist. I've started taking some very light literature notes on it just to give a sense of how you might use a map of content to flesh out some ideas regarding a specific topic area. So you can see I've got just a couple thoughts here. Structure in your work week can yield greater results in less time. There are three different variations of time blocking that this article talks about, task batching, day theming, and time boxing. Now what I've done here in the map of content is I've created a link to this literature note here. 
then eventually once I flesh this literature note out and I start to flesh out some permanent notes from that, then I'll start linking those permanent notes over here as well. Then I can start to get a cohesive idea of what this subject means to me and start to whittle those notes down in here, start to flesh out the ideas in the time blocking map of content altogether. Now, this might not be the only way that you want to create a map of content. There's the other way. This was the top down approach where you take a broad subject area and you want to dig into it a little bit. Maybe you've read a number of books on a certain subject area, or you have a lot of notes in here that are centered around a certain topic and you want to bring those notes together. Well, there is a way to do that. That's actually pretty easy inside of Obsidian. And I'm going to talk about that uh, here. So what I'm doing is I have this creativity map of content and there's a subject range uh, based upon the book range by David Epstein that is really something that I am passionate about. So I'm gonna create a range, if I can type today, not rage, MOC, range MOC. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the last one. We'll link that to the creativity MOC. Okay, so I have a few notes that are on this subject of generalists, because um, that's what the book range is about. It's about the power of generalists and how our society has undervalued generalists and overvalued specialists. And we need a combination of both of these people to balance our society out because many of our creative problems that we're solving in today's world require range to be able to gather enough information to solve them because they are multifaceted and they are a lot of times uh, crossing multiple fields of study as well. So what we can do here, and this is a fancy new feature that came out in Obsidian recently, is we can just do a search for, I think one of the topic areas that I had here for this was generalists. Okay, so, yep, here it is. Then, so we're, we search for the term generalists. Now what we can do, which I think is really cool, is we can actually click and drag these links into this note. So let's see here, I've got knowledge work generalists range generalization needs space to work well and so on. So the book time off, uh, which I've mentioned on this channel again, uh, recently is where a lot of this has come from too. There's a lot of overlap between range, uh, the book by David Epstein and time off because there's a lot of, uh, interplay within those ideas. So what I've done here is I've just started to create links to the notes that are relevant to this map of content, the topic of range or generalism. And now what I can do is as I build this out over time, I can let these ideas kind of, I get, the way Nick Milo terms it is they essentially duke it out <laughs> and to try to figure out what is the most cohesive idea that belongs in this map of content. I don't have this process nailed down to a science. And in fact, I really feel like developing a map of content is something that's more exploratory in nature. There's not a science to it. There's not a formula to it but it's really figuring out what is of interest to you and then starting to either dive into that subject area or pull the information in your vault around that subject area together and then just try to figure out what makes sense to you for how to organize it or how to think about it in your vault. Each and every one of us thinks through information differently and therefore the way your maps of content might look may look completely different different than mine. It's really just a structural tool in your vault to help you explore ideas, either dig into ones that you don't know yet, or to try to wrap your head around the ideas that you already have spent time digging into, but crystallize the information a little bit more in your vault so it's easier to access and easier to use. So what do you think about maps of content? What do you think about organizing your vault? Are you doing something different? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Again, make sure to subscribe if you found this video helpful. My name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.